Today, we are building a lithium-ion battery pack. I have acquired Molisol 21,700 lithium battery cells. I chose these larger cells because the 18,650 cells didn't fit the battery case properly. Initially, I'll test the cells, selecting those with the same voltage, and group them in sets of three. I ordered three extra cells to have backups in case one cell is faulty. Indeed, I found one weaker cell and set it aside. These Molisol cells perform exceptionally well in cold temperatures, even down to minus 40 degrees Celsius. These cells also have good power delivery capability, up to 45 amps continuously. This enhances their cold resistance. My current batteries struggle in temperatures just below freezing, so I need a battery that works well in extreme cold. I'll place fish paper between the groups. Since there is a voltage difference between the groups, a damaged cell casing could lead to a short circuit. Using fish paper reduces the risk of fire and explosion. Although individual cell casings are thin and can melt if a wire heats up in the battery pack, fish paper, being cardboard-based, remains resistant to heat, providing good protection against short circuits. I'll connect the sets with Kapton tape, which is heat-resistant and thin, minimizing the increase in the size of the battery pack. I'll use minimal adhesive between the sets so that I can easily separate them later if I need to make repairs. Now, the battery pack is ready for the next step. It's a 7S3P pack, meaning 7 cells in series and 3 in parallel. The next step is spot welding. I'll use 0.15mm nickel strips. They could have been slightly larger, I ordered them for 18,650 cells, but my cells are larger. However, it should work with these. I'll need to layer a second strip because this spot welder can't handle thicker ones, and I require more current. I ordered the spot welder with a larger 11,000 mAh battery, but I received a 7,500 mAh device. I got a partial refund, but it doesn't provide more power. I'll likely order a better one later. I don't recommend anything below 11,000 mAh for this purpose. Just barely, 0.15mm nickel strip works when the battery is fully charged. I had to charge the device twice to complete this small battery. I'll protect the sensitive parts with thick plastic tape to prevent accidental short circuits. This may melt in a short circuit, but I'll add more insulation later. I'll also add fish paper in this area where the battery monitoring system, BMS, will be placed. The BMS balances the cells during charging and protects the battery from excessive load. Next, I'll arrange the wires of the BMS module in order. This must be done carefully, incorrectly connected wires can cause a short circuit or damage the battery or module. I've measured voltages and numbered the strips in the correct order to avoid mistakes. I'll measure the voltages again from the connector before connecting the module to ensure the module or battery doesn't get damaged. The voltage should increase by 3.5 volts when moving from one wire to the next. If the measurement shows this, the wires are connected correctly. Finally, I'll connect the BMS module and monitor with a thermal camera for any signs of heating. Everything is fine, I can proceed to the next step. Next, I'll reinforce the positive and negative terminals with copper wire. At the end of the strip, the current is three times compared to the middle. I'll quickly solder the wires. Now it's time to solder the power cables. I have two parallel negative wires because I didn't have thick enough wire. It's easier to solder two thinner wires than one thicker one if you connect the wires with tape first. The BMS can now be connected in place. No smoke or explosion occurred, so everything is fine. I'll cover the battery terminals with tape and place double-sided tape under the module in preparation. I'll solder the negative output to the BMS module. All other connections are already done, and after this, all electrical connections will be ready. Now it's time to attach the module. I can't place it in the center as initially planned because the positive wires take up more space than I thought. It's a good thing I left the attachment until the end. I'll poke a small hole for the temperature sensor and thread it into the center of the battery pack. The previous module didn't have a temperature sensor, so this module is probably of higher quality. Before packaging the device, I'll perform a load test. 
I can only draw 95 watts from it, but it shows that it works. I'll monitor it with a thermal camera for a while. I'll also test how the battery accepts charging to avoid disassembling the battery pack if an issue arises. I'll connect the original charger, and the yellow light indicates that charging is working. Finally, I'll measure the charging current with a clamp ammeter. It charges with a 2 ampere current, so charging is also working correctly. Finally, I'll put the battery in shrink wrap. Now all the steps have been done carefully and tested and measured at every step, and the battery should work well. I'll place the battery in the original case, so the internals were replaced in a faulty battery. The only concern is how successful the spot welding joints are because the spot welder had limited power. Only time will tell, mainly, I'm concerned about vibration resistance. But I plan to get a better spot welder and can fix the joints later. There it is, the battery is ready to be used. It's 15 degrees below freezing outside, and I'll take it there to cool down. Let's see how well the Mollusel batteries handle the cold. Thank you for watching, 